Okay, we're going to show you how to create um, a high impact black and white. So it's not 50 shades of grey, low contrast. It's going to be a high impact, high contrast, black and white image that uh, should hopefully grab the viewer's attention. <clears throat> so this is the raw file in Photoshop, or rather in Lightroom. So I do my initial changes in Lightroom, one of which is the crop tool. And I buy my 50 by 40 mounts with a pre-cut 36 by 26 aperture. So if I have in a custom crop a ratio of 3.6 by 2.6, then if I print it 36 centimeters on the long side, I know it will perfectly fit my pre-cut mount. So um, <clears throat> I'm just positioning the eyes nicely on the third there and up towards the top of the frame for uh, just to enhance that sort of slightly sinister aspect to the uh, um, you know it matches the, the 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 look that Gerald has given me here so you can see I have the highlights and shadow warnings on that means that any blown highlights will be painted red on my screen and any blocked up shadows will be painted blue so these are really dark areas of uh, shadow now i always like to teach people not to be a wanger what do i mean by a wanger somebody who um, wangs the slider i think this originally came from a guy called guy gown <clears throat> so rather than wanging the slider if i click on the word highlights and use the minus key I can go down five at a time. So I'm just bringing the highlights down about minus 15, minus 20 there. Clicking on shadows, and I'm gonna go shift plus to go up 20 at a time. Click on blacks. This will have a major impact on the blue on the screen. So shift plus, and I'll just bring it up to 25, and that's enough to get rid of the, there's a difference between plus 20 and plus 25, just gets rid of that uh, shadow clipping. <clears throat> so, um, but this is going to be black and white. The color temperature looks fine, so I'm not going to play with the uh, the color temperature. Um, obviously, for a mono, um, you don't really worry about uh, skin tones, etc. But it looks fairly natural to me. So now I just simply send it straight into Photoshop. So. One of the things you have to watch out for, certainly in competition photography, is what I call judge bait. So you're dangling something in front of the judge, waiting to see if he will take the bait. And if he takes the bait, then you're going to lose a point or lose out to another image. So it's very important to look out for any judge bait and remove it. So for me in this image, this um, little curl of hair is judge bait. Not only is it outside of the line of the hood, but it also has caught the highlight of the uh, of, from the softbox, so it's quite demanding of attention, quite prominent. So Command J for a duplicate layer, and all I do is take the ordinary lasso tool, and I very roughly draw around the uh, the lock of hair, and then I just go Shift Delete enter and it's gone there's the before and after so shift delete brings up the fill menu and as long as content aware is already in there you can just hit the enter key there's another little hair there i might just get rid of that so i'll just very quickly go on command j the reason i go command j for a duplicate layer is because once i have filled it with content aware i can just click it on and off to see that it has done a good job there's a couple of little hairs there and i can make a double selection by holding the shift key so shift delete enter and they're gone and this little thread up here we're now getting into the nitty gritty of um, a fairly anal judge who might say, mm, there's a loose thread there. Um, so shift, delete, enter, and it's gone. So there's the judge bit removed. One of the things I want to do to this image is bring up the shadow detail in the eyes. 
there are so many ways to do this. You could do a brightening curves layer, brightening adjustment, brightness contrast layer, bring up the levels, etc. I'm going to use one called image adjustment shadow highlights. By default, it's quite severe. So I just, on the basis that less is more, I just bring back the sliders. So option and mask blacks that out. So underneath this black mask is that extent of uh, detail. So how do I bring that out? <clears throat> Just by painting a white hole through the black mask. So B for brush, not paint at 100% opacity. I always get, I'm amazed at some of the top guys going up here and trying to say, right, we're going to paint at 30% opacity and they wang the slider down to 30 and they end up on 29 and they wang it the other way and they end up on 33. Why not just go, whoops, command Z, why not just go B3 and you're automatically look at 30%, but I want to be at 100%, so B0. I've got a soft brush and you want to zoom in for this. Now this is going to be too much, painting this in at 100%. But the reason I don't build it up with lower opacities is, or lower flow even is because you'll never get two eyes to look the same. Whereas if you go in at 100% on both eyes, then you can play with opacity and both eyes should uh, look the same. So it will look a bit um, odd and garish uh, initially when we uh, have finished on both eyes. But as I say, we then play with the, uh, the opacity. And if I think I've missed anything, I can just option click on the mask and that will show me any little gray or black areas inside the eye that I've missed. Oh my goodness, look how bad I was there. So option and click on the mask. So command zero makes the image fit the screen. So before, after, and it's far too much. So whenever you teach novices or beginners in Photoshop how to brighten eyes or to carry something out like this, like skin softening, for instance, they always go too far. And you always have to go too far first to learn how to rein it back, how to learn that less is more. So again, rather than wanging this opacity slider, if I just go V4, I'm automatically at 40% opacity in that layer. If I go five now, there's 50%. So somewhere around, I think anything over 50% is too much. I might just go very quickly four or five and get 45%. If I had gone four slight delay five, I would have ended up on 50%. So if you wanna get something like 32 or 45 or whatever, for whatever reason, make sure you pick, click them in quick succession. So there's 45% <clears throat> flatten image. That gives me a new starting point. So let's turn it to black and white. Command J, I turn off the top layer and click on the bottom layer. And in Nick software, Silver FX Pro, there are a lot of gimmicks in here, but you want to go for the first one, neutral. It's, it is what it says on the tin, a neutral black and white conversion. Now, I'm just going to take a snapshot in the history palette of where we are with that, because that is a neutral black and white conversion. It's it's lacking in contrast for me, but for your novice uh, member of a club or somebody starting out in Photoshop, it's actually a pretty good basic starting point. So I now turn on the top layer and I go back into Nick Software Silver FX Pro. And this time I'm actually looking for something a little bit more uh, dramatic. So there are plenty of presets in here. Some of them are what's to be, are to be avoided, like the plague or like COVID. So you get some that will work really well, and others that don't. I'm going to go look at wet rocks, or I might look at a new one in the updated version of this software called uh, Intensifier, I think. 
Yeah, there is intensifier. And uh, it does not have film grain. If, a, if you're going to mix and match some of these filters, you need to make sure that they either both have the same amount of grain or they both don't have any grain. So in this case, neither of them has grain. <clears throat> so what I have now is the top layer, which is slightly more dramatic, and the bottom layer, which is uh, neutral. Now there's just a hint of haloing coming in there at the edge of the hood with that intensifier one. So you need to be careful to watch out for that. It's not a major problem at the moment. But if I go V5, I've automatically now got a 50% blend of those two black and white conversions. If you prefer the one on top, you know, hit a higher number than 5, go 6 and you've got a 60-40 blend or 7 gives you a 70-30 blend. If you prefer the neutral one below, you'll go for a number below 5, so that the bottom one is more uh, dominant. So I'm going to go with 77% uh, of the uh, intensifier one and flatten image. Now one thing I think it does, would benefit from, is a little vignette. In fact, let me just take a snapshot of where we are with that. So snapshot. So vignette, this is how I do a vignette. I draw out a rectangular marquee. I then go select inverse, select modify feather, and typically 400 pixels. Command J to put that on a new layer. Command L to bring up levels. And rather than wanging the slider, I double click in the middle and go shift down, down. And that is, I've changed 1.0 to 0.8. That is a 20% darkening. There's the effect of that vignette. So on the basis that less is more, if I go V7, I've taken off 30%. And it still does what I want it to do. So flatten image. Now that actually would be a reasonably good sort of intermediate level black and white. It's much better than the, if I just go back in the snapshots, um, I need to take a snapshot of just where we are at the moment, actually, with that vignette. <coughs> so there's the sort of flat, basic mono conversion, and we've now changed it to that. But as I say, we're going to try and move this up another level. So Command J, filter, next software into um, Color FX Pro. So even though it's a mono image, you can still go into Color FX Pro. I'm going to go for. Um, Detail Extractor. So by default, Detail Extractor is a wee bit too HDR. -y. It brings out too much detail. It flattens it, makes it very low contrast. But if you boost the contrast, I'm going to bring that up to um, 35, or maybe go higher, maybe go to 40. Compare button. So I like what it's doing on Gerald's face. It is bringing, so it does what it says on the tin, detail extractor. It's extracting detail out of these wrinkles, etc. So sorry, Gerald, I'm making you look older. But look, as well as doing something good, it's also doing something bad. It's bringing in haloing around the edges of the hood. So haloing is judge bait on, a, on steroids. Uh, judges will hate to see signs of, of haloing. So I'm going to click OK on that. Option and mask blacks it out. So as long as I don't paint a white hole through the black mask where there is haloing, it will not become apparent. So B for brush, we'll go seven for 70% with a nice soft edge brush. And I'm now just gonna paint that in. To do what it says on the tin, detail extractor, extract detail but without going too far, because we boosted the contrast before, after, before, after. So that's a really nice shift in that. And I'll take another snapshot, but we're still not finished. Command J and we can go back in again. There are other filters that you can use, for instance, tonal contrast. So that is almost like a one-click dodge and burn. The highlights on Gerald's face are getting slightly dodged and some of the shadows are getting slightly burned. 
So it is one click dodging and burning, but again, haloing. I'm going to click OK, going with the default settings. I'm going to do the exact same again, option and mask. B for brush, 7 for 70%. If I just wanted to subtly paint it in, I would obviously go for B3, 30%, and maybe paint in some areas more than others. But if I want to see what's underneath this mask, um, I can just shift click on the mask and see if it's enhancing any areas of the hood. I don't want to go outside the hood for obvious reasons with the haloing. But there is, so if I go B3, I can just subtly paint in a little bit of, in effect, dodging and burning on the uh, on parts of the hood where I think it enhances some of the, uh, the, the depth, the three-dimensional quality to the image. So if I option or should I shift click on the mask sorry um, I want to option click on the mask there's the uh, the mask it looks a bit mad but it doesn't matter it's the effect of those white holes in the black mask we've got no haloing and we've got great effect on Gerald's face so I will take another snapshot and um, normally the finishing touch is to do dark and light and center but i just want to see if i can push this any more sometimes you just try this we'll go in for a third time color fx pro there is one called bleach bypass and it's a filter from hell because that's what it does to your image now some people might like that but it's not for my taste but if you move the contrast slider all the way to the left the lowest you can go is 20, and 20 is plenty. There's the compare button. So again, is that enhancing it? I think it possibly is. It might be going too far in certain areas, but if we just click OK on that, and Option and or Alt and Mask, B3 means that I'm painting it in quite subtly at 30%. So instead of having white holes in the black mask that you get whenever you paint at 100%, I'm going to end up with sort of 30% grey in the areas that I only paint over once. Um, if I paint over them twice, obviously I'm building it up gradually. So I'm just building that up gradually. And I'm now obviously concentrating on the face, which is where I want the viewer to be looking. The rest is just basically a way of framing the face the hood and the background so that has enhanced it again flatten image take another snapshot and now we will finish it off <clears throat> with dark and light and center so command j filter nick software into color fx pro dark and light and center and on the basis that less is more i'm just going to bring the default settings back on the center size, I always go 20 or less. I'm going to go 12 on this, quite dramatic. Now, this is the key to this, place center. And I'm going to place it on this eye because that is where the light came from, that side, rather than the center of his face. Click OK. So before, after, before, after. V67, if you want to be anal about it, takes a third off, 33%. So V67 takes a third off, and I'm now going to flatten image. And I think the last step for this would be sharpening. So Command-J, filter, Nick software, output sharpener. So I'm sharpening for a print file. Um, I would normally use these settings, Inkjet Auto Luster 2400 by 2400. And I just ignore everything else. So as long as I've got Inkjet Auto Luster 2400 by 2400, I don't care whether I'm printing it or not. I don't care whether I'm using Luster paper. I don't care whether my printer is lower or lesser, lower or higher resolution than 2400 by 2400. I just click OK. <clears throat> now to see sharpening, you have to zoom in. So if we just turn that off and on, 
it is perfect sharpening for my taste. You always want it slightly over sharpened, particularly with beards, not too far. If you think it's too much, you can just go V7 and take off 30%. Command zero makes it fit the screen. So flatten image, take a snapshot, and there we go, there is the uh, mono print. So I want to show you the progression of this from the uh, snapshots. So we went from the color file, raw file, just with highlights and shadows uh, brought up, to a fairly basic mono conversion, to a slightly better mono conversion, better again with a vignette, more contrast on the face, more detail on the face, even more detail on the face, De dark and light in the center and the final output. So um, there is hopefully a few tips for you in how to make what I call a proper black and white rather than a 50 shades of grey monochrome image.